I'm Chris, and today we're going to make an alcohol stove out of a soda can. Let's do this real quick. One of the first things we want to do is take some masking tape and just put it around the top lip of the can. Doesn't have to be super exact, but what we're going to do is I'm just going to fold the masking tape over just to give myself a little bit of a lip. And then I'm going to make a mark. And then underneath, I'm going to make a mark right underneath there so they match up. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and take this off. And I'm going to place the masking tape on a ruler just so I can mark out where the holes are going to be for the jets. And I'm going to mark each hole about three-eighths apart. And once I have all my holes three-eighths apart, I'm going to peel off the masking tape from the ruler. And put it back around on the can. And I'm going to go a little bit above this taper here. I'm going to use those lines I made earlier as a little bit of a guide. I'm just going to push the push pin right in. And that's going to create the jets for our stove. Be my guess and experiment with how many holes you want in the can. I find that somewhere around 30, 32 holes tends to work pretty well for what I want it to do. And you continue to do that all the way around the can. And once you have the holes made all the way around the can, you can go ahead and peel the tape off. Now I like to go ahead and take my razor blade and go ahead and score the top of the can. Now this part of the can is fairly thick and it's going to take a little bit of doing. But just be patient. Keep scoring it. Keep working your way around. And at some point, the razor blade is going to pop right through. And it's going to make it a lot easier. Now be careful with the little aluminum shavings that are coming off. You don't want to accidentally get something like that in your eye or anything like that. You want to be careful. And then once you get to that point where the razor blade's kind of poking through, it becomes fairly easy to cut the top of the can out. And once you have the top of the can off, be careful when you're pulling it out or pushing it through to pull it out. Because this inside edge is pretty sharp. Just kind of just grab your razor knife and just score in the inside and kind of round it out. You could even use some sandpaper or emery paper in there if you want. Now we're going to go ahead and score a line all the way around the can. You want to be careful with this step because we are going to be using a razor blade that's not going to be secured to anything. You could go ahead and have a thick book and put this razor blade inside the book and provide downward pressure so it's not going to move. I've found that an inch and an eighth to an inch and a half works pretty good for the bottom. And I'm just going to provide light pressure going that way onto the blade and then I'm going to provide pressure going down on my blade just so I could get a nice little score line. I'm not trying to cut through the can right away. I'm going to score it a couple times and then at some point it's going to pop right through. Now the reason I use pieces of wood is because I like to switch from the top in the bottom of the can, so I'm getting a pretty decent score on the top and the bottom before I really cut through the can. At some point, you may notice that the razor blade poked through. Once you get to that point, if you're careful enough, you can kind of just push in, and it should start to cut right around that score line. Now before you do it all the way on the bottom, you want to at least do it on the top. You can give it a little bit of help just by making a little cut with your razor blade. Then once you have that, you just gently push through and it's going to go right around that score line.
not so perfect right there, but that's all right. What I've found is if you just take your pliers and crimp the edge just a little bit, and by crimp, I just mean curl the edge just a hair. Space it out every, oh, I don't know, half an inch or so. And just give it a little bit of a curl, a little bit of a twist, all the way around the whole edge. This helps get the top of the can onto the bottom of the can a little bit easier. The inner wall is going to sit down in that groove down there, which is actually this groove on the outside. And then it's also going to sit up in here in that groove, which is really the, the top of the can here. Now, I'm going to make my inner wall the diameter of the top because I want a nice tight seal at the top. And it's automatically going to make a nice tight seal at the bottom. And to make this a little easier on, on yourself, you can just trim the edge a little bit. This way you won't have any jagged edges to mess around with. You're going to have a nice clean edge. And you can do the same with the bottom. And now I'm just going to fit the inner wall inside there. And I'm going to be careful because this stuff does get pretty sharp and I don't want to cut myself. Once I got it roughly f snug in there, I'm going to just pull it out, kind of pinch it together. Some people like to use staples just to secure it in there. What I like to do is just give a little bit of a cut on the bottom going up and then flip it around and then give it a little bit of cut on the other side going down and then just go ahead and slide those two pieces together and I'm just going to dry fit it again just to make sure it's where I want it if I have to make any adjustments I can and then I'm going to trim this edge up just a little bit now you have to figure out the height of the inner wall. You can kind of set it in place. This wall here you don't want to be above where the jets are going to be. And this you want to come right to the top there. So we need to trim off just a little bit there. And you simply do that by just cutting a little bit off like you did before. Now the other thing you want to do is go ahead and make a triangle cut. on the top and the bottom, or on both sides. This way it's gonna allow the fuel to come through, come in the inner wall, and then we're gonna go ahead and put everything together. We're gonna to take the inner wall and seat it inside the top there. And then we're gonna take the bottom. And you're gonna to have to be a little patient with this one. Like I said, it's the hardest part of this whole build. Once you get it in there, you're going to just slowly press everything together. And that's pretty much it. We're done with our build. Let's fire this thing up and see what happens. Now we can go ahead and add some fuel. I'm just using 91% alcohol. And then we'll go ahead and light it. This tends to be my favorite part. Now you can go ahead and play around with different designs, meaning you can make the stove a little bit taller, a little bit shorter, add more holes, add less holes, and see what works best for you. Different designs, different amounts of holes are going to allow the stove to self-ignite a little bit faster or a little bit slower.
Now I encourage you to play around with this. I've found having a can like this where the jets are going to be about 5 8 down from the top works fairly well to where I can set my pot right on top of here and it'll boil the water. If you get the jets too close to the top, it kind of snuffs everything out and it won't work as well. Now you can also add more jets around the bottom of it if it's not too close to the top. That'll allow it to work a little bit better. I've done that in this one in my earlier ones and it works really well. Now if you're using something like this, you could also make a stand to get your pot above everything, but I really don't like doing that. I want to put it right on top of there and not have it snuff out. So like I said, something like this where you can get the jets 5 eighths of an inch down from the top works really, really well. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Definitely check out some of my other videos and don't forget to share this video with your friends. Thank you guys so much.